Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Lightning Talk, DevNet Lightning Talk, session number 1929. And we are going to talk about um, applying user zero trust policies with SecureX and APIs. And my name is Oksana Senikova. I'm cybersecurity technical solutions architect on global security architecture team. <laughs> and I'm based in Canada, so I flew over from Canada to here. And um, um, I used to live in Amsterdam before, so I really love the city and really appreciate the opportunity to come back. It's been a while and nothing really changed that much except the central station <laughs> being rebuilt. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's been amazing experience and amazing memories uh, to come back to the city. So um, before we start, just a reminder that we have a um, WebEx app and we have a separate space for this session, so please join this space. Um, if you have any additional question after the session or you need additional materials, um, I'll be sharing them over there. And uh, based on your questions, I also um, decide if there's any additional information that I need to share, links and documentation as well. So please join that WebEx space. So um, to <coughs> let's, let's dive right into it, right, and talk about the desired outcomes and why we are talking about automating zero trust. Um, on this slide, we see a lot of happy users, and we want to make sure that they stay happy. Right? The situation has changed a little bit in the past few years. Um, we are in the hybrid work environment, right, where users are no longer working from the office, and they're accessing applications anywhere in the world. Right? And we want to make sure that they have nice and good experience while accessing those applications, and that experience is secure. And uh, we, so, so we have to shift from location-centric um, security access, right, uh, and ma security management to uh, device and human-centric and really application-centric um, management. And um, you know, policy has evolved on what we what, what we are dealing with right now. And to for that to be achieved, uh, the zero trust framework was developed. Um, National Institution of Standards and Technology at US developed the standard that described main zero trust principles, right? And I just want to highlight the, the three um, important ideas here. The first one is all communications have to be secured, regardless of where it is the application location or the user location. And then um, the enterprise should collect as much information and as much context to gain full visibility into what's going on in the organization on a regular basis. Assess the state of its assets, the states of network infrastructure and communication, and um, constantly reassess and improve security posture. So that's like the second idea from this document. And then the third main um, important idea is the policies have to be dynamic, right? And while you reassess these policies and you dynamically change them, you have to take into consideration also identity information, application service information, um, and behavioral information about potential incidents um, and indicators of compromise and other environmental attributes. So like there's, you have to constantly reassess what's going on and change your policies dynamically and uh, apply least privilege access principles, not only to your perimeter as before, right? When user came to the office, they kind of were in secure location and so they get like, um, permit IP any, any kind of <laughs> um, access policy, right, from the office, but they're not, uh, come into the office anymore, right? And applications are everywhere. So um, there are five main pillars that this standard describes and other standards as well, which is uh, users, devices, network applications, and data. And uh, at Cisco, we kind of took a look at this framework and we um, simplified it a little bit by combining some of these pillars together, um, looking from a perspective of uh, how we can lay out Cisco technologies on top of the standard and how things would work together. But the principles are the same. You still have to maintain visibility and you have to use analytics to, um, and you have to use automation and orchestration to achieve zero trust outcomes across like everywhere. Because to truly achieve uh, build zero trust architecture, you have to apply those principles across all of those pillars, right? Not only to one place, but across all of those pillars mentioned on the slide. 
And so as you apply those principles, there are four main steps that you have to consider. First is how you establish trust and how you establish trust with your devices, your users. Um, you have to maintain together context, right? Uh, do posture assessment, uh, take into consideration like different risks. And then once you established uh, trust, you have to enforce it. And here we talk about um, micro segmentation, unified access, um, least privilege access principles, not only at the perimeter, but uh, at the user level as well. And then after you establish trust and you enforce access, you still have to constantly reevaluate what's going on and uh, respond to change in trust, right? If you see indicators of compromise or any additional activity going on that um, forces you to change the policy and the trust level through the user, you have to be able to apply it dynamically. So clearly there is no way to get there without automation. Um, that is just too uh, huge undertaking, um, knowing that you have to do it across all of the pillars, right? And then for you, um, depending on uh, which area you're coming from, you'll have different perspective on it, right? So um, if you're on a network team, you may only care about um, micro-segmentation and then network access. If you are on an access team that you're, you care about user identity and uh, um, endpoint security, and if you are on a SOC team, then you think about how um, different e events may affect, uh, how to respond to different events, right? How they may affect the, the trust level in my organization. But you know, in general, it's the same principles that you have to apply everywhere. So from Cisco perspective, depending on what we're trying to protect, there are different uh, control points and different tools that you will be using. But the key idea here is that this is where SecureX come into play. And this is where APIs come into play because these things, they have to share signals with each other across the board, right? Otherwise, you're not going to have like true zero trust outcomes and you will not have that true visibility that is key to um, achieving this, uh, you know, this whole outcome we are looking to. So um, a little primer on SecureX. And by the way, uh, is there anyone who's using SecureX already? Have you heard about it? One person? <laughs> All right, so a little primer on SecureX then. <laughs> we'll spend one minute just uh, getting everyone on the same page, more or less. Uh, SecureX is a uh, cloud-native built-in platform, meaning it comes at no additional cost with any Cisco security technology that you already own. And uh, it uh, brings together Cisco security uh, portfolio as well as third-party tools. We have dozens of third-party tools that integrate with SecureX. And it gives you consolidated threat intelligence information from all the sources that are integrated, consolidated context from all of your um, security tools, and one way to apply, one place to apply response actions. And so you can um, use it to detect things, right? And um, detection analysis, you can use SecureX to investigate uh, threats, manage your policies, and it also has built-in um, orchestration component, which is a general purpose orchestrator tool that will enable you to not only do security operations use cases, but also IT and um, um, network operations use cases. So it really integrates seamlessly into your environment because it comes with any Cisco security product. And it integrates with systems such as um, um, IT services management systems and SIEM systems, right, that everyone uses these days to um, provide you single place to get that visibility and get that context in one single place, right? And um, since we started talking about uh, orchestration component, we are going to use it for the demo that is coming up in a second. And uh, <clears throat> the, with regards to orchestration, uh, I wanted to mention that um, it, it is a general purpose orchestrator that anything that has API, um, can be automated. So like 
communication with any tool that has API can be automated using secure X orchestration component. We have a lot of pre-built content already, over 400 different workflows and uh, atomic actions that you can leverage um, off the shelf, but you can also build anything you want pretty much um, with APIs, including third party solutions. So that's why in this demo and in this example, I decided to use a third party tool. So we will be getting in this example um, events. We will leverage Microsoft uh, Azure APIs and SecureX orchestration capabilities to um, apply user zero trust policies uh, based on suspicious activity alerts from um, Microsoft Graph API. So we received um, automatically into SecureX a Microsoft Graph a security event that shows unusual user activity. And then we run automatically investigation. We pull all the necessary data from that event. Uh, we create SecureX casebook, which is the place where we can consolidate all intelligence that we are gathering and all comments. And we can share this casebook with different analysts so people can collaborate on it. And then after that, we will run, um, we will trigger investigation via the API, which will go to all integrated solutions with SecureX and ask if they have seen any of these observables and collect context and bring it back to the same casebook. And then after that, we will, um, uh, we will trigger uh, an action. We will trigger an action to um, block, disable that user account. Um, we will request for approval, and once we receive that approval, we will automatically disable the user. So that's what we are going to do. So let's look at this demo. So this is, we are looking at the case book. We have already pulled information from Microsoft Graph API automatically and created this case book. On the left-hand side, you see general information. Uh, we see that the user performed uh, unusual activity from the Netherlands. I swear I didn't make it up. It's just a coincidence. And uh, um, it was the first activity in 108 days for this user. In the middle, we see the IP address where the user logged in from and the user details. And on the right-hand side, we see information that we have um, collected by doing a lookup in Microsoft Active Directory uh, with additional information about the user details. So this is all already has been automatically pre-populated for us by, by the workflow. And we'll look at the workflow in a moment. But we see that this is VP of sales, pretty important user. Their office location is in the United States. So clearly, it's very unusual that they are logging in from the Netherlands. Um, all of that information has been collected by the workflow. As you can see, it's a, a block scheme approach, right? So it's drag and drop interface. You can use Python code if you want to, but you don't have to. Uh, you pretty much just configure input parameters for these uh, actions. And those are pre-built atomic actions that you can just drag and drop depending on the uh, tool that you're using. So in this case, we are running this workflow every hour. And um, after we run the workflow, we, we, uh, we can see that uh, we have also conducted investigation with SecureX uh, threat response and found additional context. We found a device associated with this user. And uh, we also saved information about the um, investigation, the point in time uh, data uh, as a snapshot. And we attach that link to that snapshot to the original case. So if we open um, device page, which is the um, device insights capability within SecureX, we can get much more information about device. Uh, again, we see associated user. We see public IP address. This is the corporate device that this user is using. Uh, and we see some state information. We see firewall is disabled, uh, antivirus is disabled. This device has some vulnerabilities. The firewall policies are in poor state. So clearly, um, this device can be potentially at risk. So we, we, we need to investigate what's going on. And uh, this data has been collected from three different sources and presented to us um, on this one page. Right? So we don't need to go and you know, hop between different UIs, copy and paste information, search for it, know where to find it. And right from this page, I can grab that IP and I can do some actions. So um, just for the sake of the demo, 
Let's look up that IP in uh, Talos um, database, and we can see that that corporate device location and the IP address where it logs in from, connects from, is in United States. So we usually, clearly that user activity that we have seen from the Netherlands is not legitimate. Probably user credential has been popped, so we definitely need to investigate it. So the trust level goes down immediately. So what we're going to do is uh, we will use a custom response action, and we will disable that user in a uh, Azure Active Directory while we are continuing investigation and uh, trying to understand what really happened right, and remediate it. So while we are continuing investigation, we will be protected already. Um, that user will not have access to any critical applications. So we can verify the user has been disabled. But what we could also do via the API, we could revoke additional user sessions. Right, All user sessions could be revoked uh, automatically. We could trigger password reset for this user through the APIs as well. So all of those additional actions could be part of the same one-click operations. And then we also send in a note to a user, write a message saying that something is going on with your account and uh, it's currently under investigation. So we let the user know that you know they have to reset their password and do additional actions. So uh, very short one minute demo, but think about from like your process perspective, number of clicks per case, how much time it saves you, and how much closer is it brings you to those principles that we talked about at the beginning. Um, <clears throat> so to, to wrap up, to kind of summarize what we looked at is um, we started with just looking at one event from one tool, but then we were able to quickly gain additional context and visibility into what's going on in our environment automatically, um, identify the criticality of this event and answer the question, do we care? Does it really matter to us? And then uh, immediately apply um, remediation, right? Um, disable this user until we finally figure out what's going on and uh, protect our organization. So strengthen security posture, lower the risks to our organization. And um, this type of automation can drastically improve SOC efficiency, right? Um, the SOC analyst efficiency, bring data right to them before they even you know, click on any tool when they open the event. And I mean, the, the effic uh, efficacy of SOC operations go you know, up dramatically. Uh, so with that, um, I wanted to share information, um, resources with you, and as a call to action, I have only one call to actions. Uh, since majority here is not using SecureX apparently yet, <laughs> you can sign up for it for free, right? It's a complimentary tool. So you just go to security.cisco.com and you create an account, and then you um, provide information about Cisco security solution that you're already using to uh, enable it and then you click on enabling orchestration. So it's like three, click, three clicks registration to have SecureX available and you can start exploring pre-built um, content to you know, make those automations a reality for you. With that, a few uh, general reminders. Uh, please fill in the surveys. It is very important for us to hear from you. Um, again, five is, means good. Everything but five means not good. <laughs> I was told to clarify it because for some people one is good. Uh, I mean, they, they you know, read from the other direction. So I was told to clarify it with the attendees. This is the way our management looks at the scores. And um, um, yeah, to continue education, uh, um, my message here is, we learn better by doing. So explore, uh, capture the flag section, go to DevNet workshops, go into walk-in labs, and actually you know, get that hands-on exposure. Um, that's your opportunity to get in front of those tools um, right here um, at this event. So thank you very much for uh, um, being here with me. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them right now.